Okay. Hi, my name is John Bristow. I'm a regional director from Calgary, Canada, and today I'm going to talk to you about support for MTOM in WYSI 3.0. WYSI 3.0 is a new assembly that's been shipped. Um, the CPT June release has been shipped last week and is now available for download from MSDN. And what it does is it provides you an implementation of advanced web service protocols. These protocols include WS security and WS addressing. In addition to that, it provides you the ability to attach binary documents to your web service um, SOAP messages in a form that's highly efficient and optimized. One of the things that I want to show you here is how you can use a feature called MTOM to basically encode binary attachments in your SOAP messages. Before we begin, I think we should start off with some definitions. The first one we should begin with is, of course, MTOM. MTOM stands for Message Transmission Optimization Mechanism. Effectively, it's a more efficient mechanism of um, attaching binary documents in your SOAP messages. The, one that, the other one that we also have to talk about is this one called XOP. XOP is the XML Binary Optimized Packaging. And what that effectively does is it provides you a means of including or referencing a binary attachment in the form of the XML info set in the form of uh, multi-part MIME. So effectively what we're doing is we're using multi-part MIME to add binary attachments to our SOAP messages. So you know, but rather than talking loosely about this, let's look at some code. So. Here's a simple project, and this project actually ships with WYSI 3.0, and it's a simple example of a client and service architecture that sends messages from the service to the client. The messages contain images which are provided on the service endpoint, and those are served back to the client. Looking at the service side, we have a number of entry points into our service. So we have a service endpoint here called binary data MTOM service. This binary MTOM service actually re will allow us to return a file that we request by the name of its file. Now when we do that, we have the option, if we so choose, of also streaming that file back, if we so choose, through the IXML serializable interface, which I'll show you how to implement that in just a second. So what we need to do here is we need to communicate with this endpoint. So what we're going to do is we're going to do so through a client. This client is going to perform three actions. The first action that it's going to do is it's going to get us a basic file through a run routine. So if we take a look at the run method, what we're doing here is we're requesting the file winter.jpg. We're doing so through our proxy class, which we've generated off the WSDL. And you'll notice that we have a property here on our proxy class called requireMTOM, setting that equal to true. When this occurs, what we're doing is we're actually sending the request to the service endpoint in the form of MTOM. When the service sees that request, it will either choose to return a response in the form of MTOM through configs, or um, it can choose not to do so. We're doing this because we want to receive the binary attachment in the more, most efficient, efficient possible manner. The other routines that we'll execute is one here called Run Secure. And what this one will do is it will actually use the policy available in WYSI to secure the message through signing and encryption. And so when we actually sign and encrypt the message, it will be validated by the server side, and then a response will be sent back for this JPEG file here called Sunset. The final routine that we're going to execute is this one called Run Streaming. Now on the service code, there really isn't anything interesting going on. However, on the, on the service side, what's really happening is an implementation of IXML serializable is being conducted. The interface IXML serializable is a new feature in the .NET Framework 2.0, which basically gives us a streaming context for sending messages back to the client in a very efficient manner. So let's go ahead and run this code. Now, because this is a service, um, a web service demo, we don't have a lot of interesting uh, things to show up on screen. Rather, we're just going to show what's actually being uh, sent across the wire. So we sent three files, as you can see down here in the Quick Console. And what I've done is I've actually done those requests through a proxy. So what we can do is we can actually take a look at the message that were sent across the wire. Now this all looks like a little bit of garbage, um, but I'll draw out the, or tease out the important pieces. At the top here, on the top of our um, window here, is the request. This is the message that's being sent over HTTP to the, to the service 
that's going to respond to our file request. And notice down in here that our message is actually MIME encoded. So we're actually using MTOM and XOP to MIME encode the request that we're sending to the service. We're making a request for a file called winter.jpg. Now, when this message actually gets to the server, what, we, what the server will do is it will actually take a look at the message and see that it's MTOM encoded. When it sees that it's MTOM encoded, it will actually make a decision whether through configuration whether or not to actually send a, a MEMCOM encoded message back to the client. So if we scroll down here, this is the response back that we got from the service. And notice also that it's MCOM, it's actually MIME encoded as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here and there's this little interesting element down here called an include element. This include element effectively allows me to point to a MIME reference that I have somewhere in this response. And that, that MIME reference is actually here as another part of the MIME message. So what this gives us is a very efficient way of serializing out binary files across the wire so that they go across the wire in a most efficient manner. So that was the first example when I wasn't actually doing anything with the message sending it on the wire. The second example that runs secure was an example where we were actually um, signing and encrypting the message or the, the request that we sent to the server. So here's the request that we sent to the server and rather than showing you all of this, um, simply what we've done is we've signed and encrypted it. Now, if I was working with the release bits of WYSI 3.0, Actually, what I would see in here is an include reference that I saw previously that would also be signed and encrypted. Now, there's an issue with WYSI 3. It's an actual bug that will be re um, resolved with the RTM bits. And what you're seeing here is the base 64 representation of that, that binary structure that I sent, um, which turns out to be the JPEG image. The final example here is a streaming example. And we won't look at the, the uh, request response, but rather what we'll take a look at is the server's code. So there's this interface called IXML Serializable available in the .NET Framework 2.0. And when we go ahead and implement that, that method, we have the option of serializing out the result through an XML writer. So let me just scroll down here and show you how that's done. This is the method that actually serializes that binary attachment out to the wire. By implementing the interface IXML Serializable, I have this method here that I can actually use to serialize out to a text writer or an XML writer through chunks. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm sending 1K chunks of the binary attachment to the resulting uh, client code on my receiving end. So that's basically MTOM support in WYSI 3.0. Um, it's very simple to implement. Simply um, just expose some me web methods using a byte array and um, the underlying plumbing will do the rest. So the, available, uh, the bits are available on MSDN, and you can go pick them up and uh, have, a, have a play around with them today. Cool.